Welcome to my video on implicit differentiation. My name is Chris, and I want to let you know on top of making these videos, I do offer live tutoring and homework solutions. So check out my website at mathmeeting.com if you need any extra help. But let's get started right away with this example. So here in this example, we need to find the derivative of the equation x cubed minus y cubed plus x squared y is equal to five. So the first thing I wanna talk about is why we need to use implicit differentiation. And this is because up until this point, we have been taking the derivative of functions that are in explicitly in terms of x. Uh, for example, if we have the function y is equal to 5x cubed minus 2x squared plus 8, uh, notice how all of the terms on the right-hand side of this function are written explicitly uh, in terms of x, so we can use standard differentiation. But in this example, notice how we have x terms and y terms that are combined together. So they are not written explicitly in terms of x, so we must use implicit differentiation to find the derivative. But don't worry, using implicit differentiation is not much different than what we've been doing already. Uh, the main difference is that we'll be taking the derivative of y terms. And the one thing that you have to remember is if you take the derivative of a y term, you must multiply dy dx right after that term. And you'll see what I mean by this once we get started with this example. So let's get started right away. So let's start on the left-hand side of our equation and take the derivative of our x cubed term. Now the first thing we do is take our exponent of three and multiply it in front of the x. And then our new exponent is going to be subtracted by one. Three minus one is equal to two. All right, so now let's move a little bit to the right and take the derivative of the negative y cubed. Now once again, we'll take our exponent of three and move it to the front of the y term. Our new exponent will be subtracted by one, so three minus one is equal to two. And remember what I said earlier, we must multiply by dy dx when we take the derivative of a y term. So let's multiply this by dy dx. All right, so now let's keep moving to the right and let's take the derivative of our x squared y term. And notice that we have two things being multiplied with each other. We have the x squared being multiplied with the y. And whenever you have two things being multiplied with each other, we have to use the product rule to take the derivative. And what I like to do when using the product rule is to label our first term, which is x squared, the first, and to label the second term, y, the second. And the formula for the product rule is the first term times the derivative of the second term plus the derivative of the first term multiplied by the second term. All right, so let's plug in our first term of x squared every time we see the word first. And let's plug in our second term of y every time we see the word second. All right, so now let's simplify this product rule portion of our problem and take the derivative of y. Now the derivative of y is just equal to one. And once again, we took the derivative of a y term, so we must multiply this by dy dx. And if we keep moving to the right, now we can take the derivative of our x squared term. Now the derivative of x squared is equal to two x. All right, so now at this point, we can keep moving to the right and take the derivative of our constant of five on the right-hand side of the equation. And we know that the derivative of any constant is equal to zero. All right, so now that we took the derivative of every single term in our equation, the only thing we have left to do is solve for dy dx. And to do this just requires a little bit of algebra. The first thing I'll do is simplify the x squared times one times dx. x squared times one is just equal to x squared and the dy dx stays the same. And we can also simplify the two x times y that is just equal to two x y. All right, so once again, we need to solve for dy dx. 
So to do this, let's get all of our dy dx terms on one side of the equation and all of the other terms on the other side of the equation. So the 3x squared and the positive 2xy are both non-dy dx terms. Let's get them to the other side of the equation. I mean, we can do this by subtracting 3x squared from both sides and by subtracting 2xy from both sides. And notice on the left-hand side of the equation, the 3x squared and the negative 3x squared cancel each other out. The positive 2xy and the negative 2xy also cancel each other out. And the only thing we're left with on the left-hand side is our dy dx terms. And on the right-hand side of the equation, now we'll have negative 3x squared minus 2xy. All right, so now our next step for solving for dy dx is to factor the dy dx. Uh, notice how both terms on the left-hand side of our equation have a dy dx in common. So if we factor out that dy dx, what we have left over for our first term is negative 3y squared. And what we have left over for our second term is positive x squared. All right, so we have one last step to solve for dy dx. Now, the idea is to get dy dx by itself. So we need to get rid of this negative 3y squared plus x squared being multiplied. So to get rid of it, we can divide both sides by negative 3y squared plus x squared. And notice on the left-hand side, the negative 3y squared plus x squared cancel each other out and we have solved for dy dx. This is the solution to our problem. dy dx is equal to negative 3x squared minus 2xy, all divided by negative 3y squared plus x squared. So I hope this video gave you a better idea on how to use implicit differentiation. If you wanna keep on learning, check out my next video in this series. Also, once again, I do offer live tutoring and homework solutions, so check out my website if you are interested. The link is in the screen. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next one.